Norway's oil riches have been ingenuously transformed into a lasting legacy, making it the world's best investor. This was accomplished by creating a sovereign wealth fund with a remarkable value of $1.4 trillion, which provided its residents with an amazing safety net. Despite facing financial turmoil in the 1980s and receiving criticism for increasing its equity exposure before the global financial crisis, the fund has consistently surpassed the expectations of institutional investors. The fund's resounding success can be attributed to its transparency, rigorous corporate governance and socially responsible investing approach, making it a remarkable model of prosperity. But what's the secret behind its triumph? Let's explore. Norway's economic prosperity began in 1969 when the American oil firm Philips Petroleum discovered a substantial amount of oil on the Norwegian continental shelf in the Ekofisk field. The biggest oil field in Norway, measured by output, with many additional oil fields discovered since then. The state then quickly implemented a petroleum tax to ensure that the oil riches discovered beneath the seabed remained public property, preserving the newly discovered wealth in the hands of citizens and future generations. The country grew immensely rich overnight, and you may think that that's the end of the story. But, like many other nations that found themselves unexpectedly wealthy, Norway made the same error as countries like Venezuela, where the government heavily relied on oil revenues and failed to diversify the economy. Norway spent too much oil money too quickly. Credit easing in the early 1980s worsened this, since interest rates were far below the market levels leading the economy to overheat and inflation to hit double digits. This went on until 1986, when oil prices fell. Trade surpluses abruptly turned into massive deficits, lending began to freeze and banks began to fail. All of these contributed to the Norwegian banking crisis that lasted from 1988 until 1992. Until 1990, Norway spent all of its oil income, largely reinvesting it in the oil sector. But something had to change. As a result, Norway established the Norwegian Petroleum Fund in 1990 to invest its oil income overseas. The Sovereign Wealth Fund was established with two primary objectives. First, the government desired to transform oil, a limited resource, into a sustainable revenue source for future generations. Furthermore, they wished to avoid the boom and bust cycles induced by variable commodity prices. When oil prices fell in 1986, the country learned the hard way. Second, they were attempting to avoid the Dutch disease, which occurs when sudden inflows of foreign currency into one industry cause the national currency to appreciate, making exports more expensive for other countries to purchase, while also lowering competitiveness in other industries such as manufacturing or agriculture. This ultimately leads to deindustrialization, which is exactly what occurred to the Netherlands after it discovered Europe's largest natural gas reserve, hence the term. The oil fund addressed both of these issues by investing in stocks outside of the oil business, which provided the nation with much needed diversification. Furthermore, by investing in foreign assets, the government might gradually absorb the oil wealth rather than all at once avoiding the Dutch sickness and preserving the profits for future generations. Since many resource-rich countries fell into poverty after finding their natural resources, the Sovereign Wealth Fund is essential for Norway's economic growth. Norway is unlike other countries. However, it learned from its mistakes and began planning for the future rather than rushing to spend its oil money. This is the type of long-term thinking that politics sorely needs. The fund is the most successful sovereign wealth fund in the world, and it has helped Norway become one of the richest countries in the world. But how does it work? The Ministry of Finance manages the GPFG, Government Pension Fund Global, which establishes the fund's goals, regulations and politics. However, the fund is managed by Norges Bank, Norwegian Central Bank. The fund, contrary to its name, is not a pension fund, and the assets in the fund are not used for a defined purpose such as retirement or healthcare. As a result, no individual organization has a direct claim on them. Instead, the fund is utilized by depositing funds directly into the state budget, where they subsequently flow directly into the Norwegian economy. To maintain the fund's worth, the finance ministry limits withdrawals from the fund to 4% every year, because 4% is the fund's long-term projected return. 
If you're interested in yearly retirement, you've probably heard of the 4% rule. Its foundation is similar. The 4% withdrawal rate that was used when the fund was smaller is now comparable to a 3% withdrawal rate in 2017 because of the fund's substantial growth. Therefore, the withdrawal rate was changed to 3%. However, this design is rather adaptable. When tax receipts are substantial, as they were in the early 2000s, less than 4% of the fund is allocated to the state budget. In terrible times such as late 2008 or early 2020, more than 4% of the fund will be sent to the economy to mitigate economic harm. This is a vital safety net for Norwegians. Other countries do not have the luxury of drawing funds from a $1.4 trillion oil fund during a crisis. In times of crisis, most governments might increase their debt or print more money to offer stimulation, which works but has negative side effects, such as inflation. As a result, the fund functions as a fiscal policy instrument, which is a government instrument for regulating taxation, borrowing and public expenditure to affect the economy, and has been very effective for the country. Norway has tremendous oil riches and it has turned that income into even more wealth, making the country extremely rich. Easy enough, but how does this government invest this money? After all, if they don't invest it effectively, it's pretty much useless. And managing a $1.4 trillion fund is far from easy. The Norwegian investing strategy distinguishes itself through traits such as a lengthy investment horizon and minimal management costs. The oil fund, commonly known as the Norwegian Government Pension Fund Global GPFG, was founded in 1990 to invest in Norway's oil and gas income for future generations. The fund aims to generate a passive revenue pool in the long run, which makes it an important long-term investment strategy for the country. Given Norway's riches and the lack of foreign owners, the fund is more resistant to short-term capital losses and volatility. As a consequence, the fund has been able to maintain its equity-heavy portfolio with an impressive 72% allocation to stocks. This is much higher than the industry's average and represents a dramatic departure from the fund's previous approach. Initially, the fund mostly invested in government bonds, but by 1996 the allocation had been lowered to 40% equity and 60% debt. Some consider the fund's high equity allocation ridiculous, yet it is a deliberate plan to produce long-term growth and returns. The fund has spread its investments across 70 countries globally, with a portfolio of equities, bonds and real estate. The equity-heavy portfolio reflects the fund's belief in the global stock market's long-term growth potential. The fund's size, long-term focus and low expenses provide it with a significant edge, allowing it to withstand short-term market swings while achieving greater long-term returns for future generations. In 2007, the fund planned to invest 60% of its overall assets in equities. This was heavily criticised at the time, since 2008 was a disastrous year for investors, including Norway's oil fund, which was down more than 20%. However, it covered all of its losses in 2009 with a 25.9% return, the fund's highest return in a single year. In addition to equities, 25% of the fund is invested in fixed income assets, such as government and corporate bonds. Another 2.5% is invested in real estate. The fund first entered the real estate market in 2010, when it purchased 25% of the Crown's estate's assets on London's Regent Street. Since then, the fund has acquired the property in both Germany and Switzerland. In 2013, it also entered the US real estate market investing in New York, Washington DC and Boston. It joined the Asian real estate market in 2017, beginning in Tokyo. Recently, the fund has invested in renewable energy. However, this accounts for less than 0.1% of the portfolio. Norway employs a basic but unusual technique, as you may have observed. When looking at institutional investors, you will typically notice a considerable portion of their portfolio is allocated to exotic assets such as private equity for high returns or gold as an inflation hedge. Norway does not invest in these because it is too large for private equity investments to bring real value, and it does not require an inflation hedge as long as it has plenty of oil under the sea. Deflation is significantly more concerning to the fund than inflation. So, 70% of the $1.4 trillion portfolio is invested in equities. But which stocks? Let's take a look. 
For diversity, the fund contains almost 9,000 stocks, including 69 different countries. However, the equity index is around 50% European equities, excluding Norway, 35% American, Middle East, African stocks, and 15% Asian and Oceanic stocks. Fixed income assets are around 60% European, 35% US and Canadian, and 5% Asian and Oceanic. You may be wondering why the majority of investments are focused in Europe. This is due, in part, to currency considerations. All assets are unhedged, and the Norwegian currency, the krona, has historically been less volatile against European currencies than it has been against non-European currencies. The fund is also bound by strong ethical guidelines. For example, in August 2020, it barred India's Page Industries, a manufacturing firm, with complaints of human rights breaches in one of its facilities. Furthermore, the fund rejected four Canadian oil and gas corporations, Canadian Natural Resources, Sanovus Energy, Suncor Energy, and Imperial Oil, that emit excessive amounts of greenhouse gases. Companies that own assets or get more than 30% of their revenue from thermal coal will also be excluded from the fund. Norway was a fortunate country in that it discovered enormous reserves of oil just when oil prices were skyrocketing. But what distinguishes Norway from other successful countries is its long-term thinking and wise management, which few countries have. And understanding how Norway is so successful requires a grasp of its large sovereign wealth fund. China has done its hardest to impart this long-term thinking and wise management, but it has so far been unsuccessful, as a major housing bubble arose and became a full-fledged property market tragedy. If you liked the video, make sure to like it and hit that subscribe button for more jaw-dropping information.